The stats tell you that FSU's defense was surprisingly decent last season, coming in a respectable 30th in yards per play, but anybody who watched them knew there was plenty left on the table. It's tempting to feel like FSU's problems came in the secondary. After all, plays like this tend to stick in people's memory. And it is true that FSU ranked 71st in completions of 20 plus yards given up. But on average, they were pretty effective at shutting down opponents' wide receivers. In fact, they ranked 12th in the country in opposing completion percentage when targeting wideouts. So to tease out potential areas of growth, it's worthwhile to dive into the worst performances. So let's start with Syracuse, statistically their worst game on defense according to yards per play. A significant amount of Syracuse's yards came on the ground by their quarterback and most of those came on plays that weren't designed quarterback runs. On this play, the outside zone play action draws the linebackers towards the line of scrimmage, but FSU should be covered because the backside defensive end's job is to contain the quarterback and buy the linebackers enough time to recover. Something else to note is that Lundy commits to the run here by turning his shoulders, a habit likely developed to make up for his lack of top end speed. While Johnson does miss the tackle here, he does a good enough job of slowing down the quarterback for the linebackers to limit the gain to single digits. However, the pursuit is slow in arriving, and neither backer is in good position to make the play. Something similar happened later in the game. Another outside zone play action draws up the linebackers, but this time the backside defensive end doesn't maintain any kind of contain. FSU's linebackers again commit with their shoulders, but they recognize passing time, they just lose a foot race to Syracuse's quarterback. The next game down the yards per playlist was UNC, which ran into similar issues for very different reasons. FSU allowed noted speedster Sam Howell to rush for over 100 yards. However, this was by design. Take this play for example. On a third and longish, FSU sells out to stop Sam Howell from using his best asset, his arm. If we <coughs> pretend that Amari Gaynor is a defensive lineman, FSU is playing dime with one true linebacker. They're also playing cover two man, which dedicates seven men to coverage and effectively invites Howell to risk his body for a first down. By season's end, FSU would prove to be one of the worst teams in the country at limiting rushing yards to opposing quarterbacks. But there's more to this story. So back to the list. Notre Dame was the next game, and it was a bit of a fluke in retrospect. Most of their yards came on air plays like this, with NFL level completions that Jack Cohn couldn't maintain throughout the season. This game was by far FSU's worst through the air, and Notre Dame's second best. This brings us to NC State, where I want to settle for a minute. NC State's quarterback Devin Leary, while really good, he doesn't quite have the extra gear that noted track star Sam Howell showed off. But there's nothing magical about quarterbacks taking off. The problem came down to FSU's linebackers' inability to run the width of the field. So NC State decided to approach that weakness from a different angle. This play should look familiar. It's a play action outside zone, but instead of the quarterback leaking out like we saw at Syracuse, NC State leaks out the backside H-back. The result is familiar as well. While Kalen Deloach, FSU's quickest interior linebacker, does manage to close the gap, it seems like he's not in full pursuit, which leads to a missed tackle and a touchdown. Outside zone play action isn't the only way to attack this weakness. They also found multiple ways to isolate linebackers in the passing game. Here, FSU is in cover four, which means that they can run off this corner and isolate this linebacker on an out route underneath for an easy pitch and catch. They would also simply clear out all of FSU's DBs using four verticals to get the running back one-on-one -on -one with an inside linebacker in space. Because of these deficiencies, FSU is 114th in the country at yards per attempt given up to tight ends and running backs, the positions most likely to be covered by linebackers. But there is a glimmer of hope. FSU's linebackers have reportedly slimmed down and by season's end, Kalen Deloach was decently reliable in coverage. Here he is on the same clearout play, and he's able to take away the quarterback's outlet. In addition, the Knolls have added veteran linebacker Tatum Bethune, who had by far the best opposing passer rating when targeted last season out of current FSU players. The linebacker position is having to evolve in the modern football game. Instead of space fillers in the running lanes, they increasingly need to be space fillers out in, well, space. So far, FSU's been behind the curve in this aspect, and it's something that needs to be fixed if they plan on taking a step forward. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe, and join us over on Knowles247 where we take these concepts and extend the conversation. See you next time.